Alrighty here. Welcome to WMFO Studio A. I'm Nick, the resident guru, and I'll be taking you on a tour of the studio's functionality. After you've watched this, hopefully you should have all the information you need to run a really kick-ass show. We recommend you give yourself a few extra minutes as you're arriving here um, to coordinate with the DJ before you and get set up. If there's no on-air DJ, just you know sit down and get yourself situated. First thing is you should open up the web browser. WMFO uses the Google Chrome web browser up here. It looks like a little cyborg beach ball. Sometimes you'll notice that you'll see a couple additional arrows here. If you click on this twice, you'll see that there are a bunch of windows open. Um, what we find is that some people, sometimes people open extra windows and the easiest way to reset this and to um, get back to where you want to be, let me just close this playlist here and log off. The easiest way to do that is to go ahead and right click and just hit quit. That's gonna close out Chrome entirely and it'll reset you to the starting point when you reopen Chrome by clicking once more, you'll see that there are four pages open. Two really important ones are going to be Spinatron right here and Shoutcast here. When you get in, the first thing you should do is log on into Spinatron. Just fill out, fill out WMFO here, your email address, nick at WMFO.org in my case, and then your password and hit submit. Once you've logged on, go ahead and click New Playlist. Select Live on Air and fill out all your details. Uh, if you have a show already, it will just appear here. Otherwise, you can select I'm subbing for someone or not a regular show, in which case I'll fill out my details here and hit submit. And now we're ready to go. You'll also notice here that there's another program called Rivendell. Looks like a little radio tower with a star in the background. This is what we use for playing music and our radio automation system. You should also get the board set up to your liking. You can envision this, this large board device as kind of a combiner. We have only one web stream and one transmission, but we have many, many different sources which are possible to connect to that. So what this does is you can envision every single source plugged into the back of the board where it says its name here. And then each one of these channels, this strip here, represents a source. You can control it, turn it on, off, turn the volume up and down. And then all of these are combined into one source for transmission. There are more sources than we can fit on this. We only have 12 channels here. But since this is a digital board, this is essentially just a big, really fancy, expensive keyboard. You can select between the sources easily and change them. The easiest way to get set up, first and foremost, is to choose a profile. So rather than coming in here and reconfiguring each source, which takes a little bit of time, um, we have a couple of profiles set up. So the profile button is in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to put a label on this so it's a little easier to read. Go ahead and press this button. You'll see it lights up like that. And now the clock over here has changed to a profile list. There are a number of default profiles up here at the top which we have created for you to use. The default show profile is going to be the one you want to go to if you are a solo DJ. This has almost every source, all three CD players, Rivendell, the two aux sends, DJ Mix, tape deck, web browser, everything you could want, except uh, it only has one microphone. So if you're a solo broadcaster, that works fine. There are also two other presets called 4Mic plus Aux and 4Mic plus CD, which you can choose if you uh, have more than one person in the studio, guests, etc. And you choose between those based upon whether you want Auxes or CDs. So if you have CD players, you're going to see that this populates the CD players on channels 5, 6, and 7. And 8, rather. So, to select between these, we use the, the mouse arrangement. It's a little bit difficult to use, but you have this rotary dial here, rotating it in either direction. Left will go back up, right goes down. Pretty straightforward. You just rotate it and watch this display here. Once you've highlighted the one you want, let's say I want the 4 mic plus aux preset, I go ahead and hit enter, and you'll watch the board configure itself. In the bottom right hand corner, you can see the name of the currently active profile. Once you've chosen your profile, you can go ahead and hit this profile button again, and the main display will return to the clock. Now, obviously, we might want to customize these a little bit. Let's say we want to use the tape deck because we love that sweet tape hiss. We can select any of these sources to be different ones by going to the top. Each one of these has either a little button or a knob. Um, if you go ahead and press this, it brings up the source menu. 
There are a lot of different advanced parameters here. The main one that you want to focus on is the one at the top. It says current source. So once again, we can use this knob to select between them. By rotating, you see we select between the different ones. Select the one at the top, go ahead and hit the enter key to select. And now we see the entire list of the different settings that are available. Each one of these corresponds to a source. We have everything from phones to remote broadcasts to the other studio. Go ahead down here and select whichever source you like. We're going to go with tape and hit the enter key. You'll see the source changes here. The one caveat here is if you had this on when you tried to change it, it would blink up there to indicate that you need to turn the old source off before the new source will appear. This is convenient because if you accidentally change it mid-show, it's not going to cut off your currently playing music on the CD player or something. Once you're done here, you can hit the same source button twice, and you'll exit that menu and go back to home. There's one pro tip here. If you press the profile button again, you'll see that there are several profiles at the bottom with a tilde here. These are profiles that we've created for DJs by request. If you email ops at wmfo.org, we can create a profile for you. Just specify which channels you want where and any other advanced settings that you may have. We're going to talk a little bit about levels. There are four meters on this screen, which may be a little bit confusing. The one that you really care about is the one on the far left. It says program one. You can see that the levels right here are about right. A little bit of red is good. Uh, you want as much yellow as possible. The one thing you want to avoid, however, is if you turn this up, you'll see we get the over indicator. That means that the, the signal level is clipping, which you will never ever damage any equipment in the station by doing that, but it doesn't sound as good. So you, in order to run the best show, uh, you should keep your levels constant. Failure to do so will result in weird sounding shows. It can also be unprofessional. What you'll find is that, that You'll sound very loud and your music will be quiet or vice versa, and it'll be jarring for your listeners. We do have a compressor at the end of the signal chain which helps to keep everything uh, in line, which you can see the levels over here. But focus on this meter and adjust it to match so that we have about that much level. You'll notice that sometimes music may start off quietly, that's fine. You don't need to be hyperactive on this, but you do want to make sure that your levels are okay. You should start with the red mark here, and you can increase it as necessary. You should really never have the level down here unless you're trying to talk over music or do something special. If I come into the studio and automation is on at minus 60, I will send you a very angry email. So leave the level right there. So most of the devices in the studio have been pre-leveled. For example, the tape decks, the CD players, and Rivendell should all be pretty happy right at the red mark there. However, we don't have control of the individual computers, so if you're plugging your computer in with an aux cord, there are a couple of steps you need to observe. We've calibrated this system to use um, Macs and iPhones, so the levels are going to be pretty appropriate for those devices because they all tend to have similar levels on the output. Make sure you turn all of your volume to the maximum, and then you should be good to go. However, if you have different types of devices, like certain PCs, the quality and the loudness of the uh, headphone jacks will vary widely. So you may need to experiment, and you may also need to push the levels up a little bit higher so that you see those nice, good levels right there. Again, if the levels look like this, too low. Still a little bit too low. More appropriate. And that's clipping. So somewhere in between here and there is appropriate. So now the phones. The phones have been a constant and perennial bane of the existence of many people because of the complexity of these buttons. And I, I understand that it's a little bit difficult, but, but bear with us. There's also this handy control board cheat sheet that explains how to use all of this equipment. So we have multiple phone lines, if you'll see. You can see phone, phone two. Um, this is fairly straightforward. This is what you use to pick the phone off the cradle. So if you press this button, it picks up the phone. Now there are kind of two modes that the phone could be in. Right now, after you've answered the phone, you can turn this up and put the phone on air, like so. And the caller can speak to you and you can speak to them and they'll go out on the air and everything will work just fine through a lot of magic and trickery and very expensive equipment. Alternatively, if you answer the phone like this, you can use the talk back and preview buttons and this will allow the DJ who is sitting right here using the DJ headphones right here and the first microphone 
to communicate with the caller directly off air. So to do that, you use this sort of motion where you press and hold the talk back and then press the preview and release. If you press them sort of both at the same time, they don't stay on. This, this motion is essentially press and hold, press, and it's ready to go. You can practice it a few times, but it should be fairly straightforward. Um, you'll notice that if you press the on button here, it shuts these off. And then if you press these, it shuts it off again. This You only use one or the other. You don't need these to be on when you have the caller on air. These are the flashers that will indicate that someone has called in. Essentially, if you see this flash, it means that someone is calling. There are two here. These correspond to the first and second lines, respectively. You'll also see this icon flash, this icon flash, as well as this square at the top. I can simulate that for you now. Thank you for calling WMFO, Tufts University's community and freeform radio station. To be connected with the DJ on air, press 1. To leave a message... So notice now the phone rings, and what you'll see here is this flashes on the appropriate line, and this flashes here. To answer the call, go ahead and hit that. You also have a hold button here. This is a little bit more advanced, but if you put them over to hold, they'll hear the music that's on air. And if you're talking on air, they'll hear you there. And this indicator indicates they're on hold. But anyways, put them back here, and if I flip this on here, you should be able to hear the phone. Yeah. And you'll be able to hear it through this set of headphones. It's very disorientating. Again, put them on air, click this. As soon as you turn this on, they'll be able to hear the, the air feed coming out over their speaker. So they'll be able to hear everything that's going out that includes your mic one. So there's no need to keep the talk back on while they're on air. Go ahead and turn this on, turn this up, and they'll be on air. Love that song. Anyways, once you're done, click this again, click this again, and they'll be hung up upon, like so. If another caller were to call in, you would see them flashing here, and the second set of flashers on the right would illuminate. There are only two sets of flashers, however, there are actually four phone lines, so it's important to keep track of this. If we go over here to the talk show profile, I can show you a little bit more. Heading on over to the talk show profile here, you'll see we have three phone lines. So there are technically four phone lines running off VoIP. There's also the old phone. So there are two separate phone numbers you can use. If anything ever goes wrong with the VoIP, you can still use the old 617-627-3800 number. But basically, you can give that phone number out to any guest that you want to call in separately, and then use the regular number for all the listeners. They'll get the little voice recording to tell them that they're calling the radio station and then connect to you on the board. And then you can use this separately. You can also call out using the phones. To do that, what you're going to do is go ahead and hit the set button here. Then go ahead and call the phone number you want to using this dial pad here. If you look all the way over here, you'll see the phone number populate there. And I'm going to call the old studio line. Go ahead and hit the enter key when you're done. And you'll see that that displays the phone number you're calling. And then on the right here, you should see this start to light up. It may take 17 years for the Tufts phone system to work, but here it goes. And again, you'll see this right there. And you can answer that like that. And now there's a horrible feedback loop in the board. Cool. Once you're done, again, you can hang up on each of these by clicking that. And once you hang up on this one, you should see that the number over here gets hung up upon too in some grand period of time. Either that or it gets a busy signal. And again, to hang up, click that. So you can see here that we have these four phone lines here. You can switch between the dedicated 3800 phone and VoIP 4. 
it's important to know that since we only have four phone capable channels here on the right and we only have four actual physical hybrids to connect the phones to the board that you can only select either the 3800 phone or a VoIP 4 at one time. You'll see right there that you see that it'll display an X if you try to put them both on at the same time. So here we've selected VoIP 4 and if we try to select 3800 phone you'll notice it has a little X there. The other big thing on this is the monitoring section. This allows you to select what you're listening to. You'll notice that we have monitor one, which refers to these overhead speakers here, and headphones, which refer to just the DJ set of headphones. The guest headphones will always listen to program one like this, and we really recommend that you leave these set here, the headphones listening to the program, and the monitor listening to the external one. External one is the, the radio receiver that we have, which allows us to listen to the broadcast. So if there's static on external one, that means the transmitter is off. So this, each one of these is a column. So you can, for the monitor, you can select which source you want, either external one, any of the programs, and the same thing for the headphones. If you hear a little bit of an echo, there's a little bit of a delay on the, on the external one in your headphones. That's usually what that means. Sometimes people will complain to me that the headphones are broken, and it's actually because you've selected external one here instead of leaving it on program one. Again, if you press and hold the profile button, it will reset all of these options. So if you press and hold this for five seconds, that will reset the profile to the original. And all of the profiles that we have listed on the, the global profile menu should have these settings memorized. So if anything's ever kind of screwed up, just press and hold this button or select a different profile. All right, so word about Spinatron. It's fairly straightforward. Um, fill in the artist, song, and disc here. So if I want to go to the Beatles. Now you can scroll down here and uh, select one of these. Um, some people complain that the autocomplete data is a little bit weak. Um, but we do, we are working with Tom to, to fix that up, Tom at Spinatron. Anyway, so you basically can, can type and the autocomplete will show up. Please try to uh, verify that these autocompletes make sense. But if you click the right disc, you'll see that the, uh, the cover art comes up like that. And then the time will be displayed here and just hit submit. Um, why do we do Spinatron? Um, there are a couple of reasons. One is that we're required to be able to um, send the data about what we played to uh, one of the licensing agencies that allows us to play music on the web stream. Um, the other part of this is that it will display on both your car radio and your uh, home computer if you're streaming with like iTunes for instance the track will show up as well as on the top of our website so it's very helpful for our listeners um, to do that. Uh, in order to be uh, most compliant with that it's best if you um, are able to line up the song with the very beginning of the uh, line up the um, the uh, Spinatron log with the very beginning of your song so that it will, will appear on people's computers and radios at about the right time. Last but not least we're going to cover Rivendell. This is WMFO's radio automation system. It can be a little bit uh, kludgy, it's kind of an older program, but you'll find that it has a lot of very powerful features that make it very useful for on-air applications. So first, automation is running right now. You can tell that by the fact that all these songs are populated here and the fact that this outside box here is gray. If you go ahead and click this, automation will turn off and it will load a blank log here, so all of these will be removed. So what you can go ahead and do now is add a song. So note that this pie chart here will count down the amount of time until the song is done. And it's very important that over here we can control whether or not songs play continuously or single. Continuous is green. So if we go ahead here and hit add, we'll be able to add a Beatles song. Like this cover of Lady Madonna that I always use to sound check here. So if you go ahead here, listen to the monitors. You'll note that I now have it set on continuous. So this counts down two minutes and 49 seconds until we're out of time and the songs are all over. If you click this to single, you'll see that we only have 25 seconds. 
One thing that this actually allows you to do, which is quite cool, is it allows you to start songs a little bit early to crossfade them internally. So if you'll hear, we hear the song is kind of fading out. And with a second or two left, it will transition between songs quite seamlessly, actually, which is kind of cool. In addition, we have several other panels here. You can see that this is PSAs. So this is called the sound panel over here on the right. And this allows you to just select between all sorts of different things that we can load in here. The, the public service announcement department helps load all these in. So if you see here, there's a drop down menu where you see S1. This is for the panels. There are a number of different ones. There's one for PSAs, there's one for station IDs, there's one for promos. This one is kind of important. It's called Ops Utilities. If you go here, you can see we keep a couple of utilities around here. That's just a spare cart there. But if you see switch to Studio A and switch to Studio C, if you want to switch between studios, you can just click that. I'll do that now. And you notice that we've lost all of our levels. And then you'll notice this little notification appear here that says we're off air. If you click this again, what you'll find is that we return to air. You'll see that there. I wouldn't recommend doing that very frequently uh, because it does cut off all the audio. So do that whenever something's broken. You can do it from either studio. Just go ahead and select the Ops Utilities panel. And some people do get very, very, very confused when this is set to a different thing. They'll be like, oh, it's not working here. All you have to do is go down and select between the multiple panels. There are multiple different ones, a couple donation PSAs, vintage PSAs, PSAs. And go back there. And you can select a public service announcement by just clicking on it. And you can select as many of these simultaneously as you want. Uh, click to start, click to stop. The other really cool thing is that as I'm playing this song here right now, Spinatron will actually automatically log it. So if I go up here and I click in the UL bar and just hit enter again, it'll refresh the page and you'll see that this song has logged automatically. This saves you a lot of work if you're able to play your songs off of Rivendell. Um, note that this doesn't work if you're just playing it off of YouTube or Spotify. You have to actually use the Rivendell application. We do have the capacity to add songs to this, edit and curate, and it's a big project that we're working on is making this a lot more user-friendly and ensuring that we have a lot more music in here so that people can use this more regularly rather than just bringing in an iPod. When you're done here, all you have to do is click the Automation On button. You'll see this load, and it'll start playing. There's an ID going right now. If something ever happens where you can't load this or, or it doesn't work or something's broken, there's a little utility over here called Fix Problems with Rivendell with this wrench. We cover this in the, uh, the Oh Shit It Broke manual, which should live right there. But all you have to do is click that and it will close out of this and restart it and hopefully fix any of the issues you're having. There are also instructions in that manual down there to reboot the computer and reset it if there are problems or any other problems that you might encounter here. Remember that you can always contact the ops list or use the phone number which lives over there, any of those phone numbers on the who to call list to reach someone. This over here is pretty cool. This is the DJing rig. We have a couple of CDJs and two turntables. Now it's very important that you don't put anything on these. Not coffee. Please do not put anything on this turntable. These are very fragile, very, very expensive, precisionly instrumented pieces of equipment. So to use these, all you have to do is click the on switch. You'll notice that this turns on. You select your speed and then you hit start stop. So these tone arms should be very well balanced, but basically what you want to ensure when you are balancing the tone arm is that there is a different procedure for each of these, but if you see this, this sets the pressure here on the tone arm. So if you have this set to zero like that, it should actually float above the turntable. Now what we can do is set the pressure, typically one and three quarters, so you see that that's... So if this is zero there, that's one gram of pressure, that's one and a half. Usually want one and three quarters. It depends, people uh, have different rules about this. And all you wanna do is uh, use your finger here to, oh God, difficult, to lower it onto the record like that. When you're done, put it back like that. You can stop this. This is your speed adjustment. You should never really have to adjust this, but for 60 hertz, this is gonna tell you when you're running at exactly 33 RPM, slow, fast, pretty straightforward. Just leave that pitch like that. This is the turntable one source. It'll say TT1 up on the board. We also have the, the DJ the mixer here, which is going to call DJ Mix on the, on the board. So let's operate this. These are two very nice Technics SL1200 turntables. M3D. Quite nice. I think these are from the 80s, which shows you how long these last, as opposed to these stupid CD players, which break every 10 minutes. 
But what you're going to do here is, this is the on switch, this is not entirely obvious, you flip that on like that, now that the turntable is on. Same thing for this one. The adjustment procedure is fairly similar for this as well, but you see that someone has adjusted this up. People vary on their opinions, 1.75. The important thing is that, again, if you rotate this whole thing, and you get the whole thing to zero, it should float. You also want to zero this. So if you if you release this here, tone arm should float over. You'll see right now, it's a little bit unbalanced. You can see it's on the ground. So what we want to do is we want to rotate this to back off the pressure, so we'll turn it into the negative region. Now you see it's floating up. And now you see it's it's floating right there. So then you can take the very front portion here and s rotate this around until this is at zero. Now you've balanced the, to the turntable, toner, rather. Here, so once again, this is called an anti-skate adjustment. This helps ensure that the tone arm keeps in the center of the record groove. So again, we'll go to one and three quarters. And then you want to match that setting on this adjustment here, 1.75. Now you're ready to go. You can hit start and drop the needle onto the record. Same thing here. So this is the DJ mixer here. This is gonna be your power button. Flip it on, and there are a bunch of sources down here. So again, this is very similar in layout to this board, except this is an old you know, analog style. So you can see that these are all labeled, turntable left, turntable right, CDR, CDL. You'll see that these should be set to phono. That stands for phonograph, obviously. First of all, you want to make sure these are set. Some people tweak these, but in general, you should leave these set straight up unless you have a particular source that requires that they be adjusted. Color, I don't even know what that is. Low. All right, so this is a crossfade. So again, the ones on the left are set to A and the ones on the right are set to B. This is for crossfading. So what essentially you can do is turn these sources up and then crossfade between them. If you had two records going simultaneously, you could crossfade between them once these are both up. Or you can set these to through and that means that it, the crossfader won't affect them. But usually they're left like that, and then you can select between the sources like that. There's also a headphone jack right here, which you can use to listen to it and cue using the cue buttons. So once we're ready to play this record, let's go ahead and hit start. We'll drop the needle on here. Be very gentle with these things. You want to drop it on the outside or in between the songs. And you can hear, if you listen very carefully, that you can actually hear the, the sounds coming off of the cartridges. The needle vibrates. It's pretty cool. Anyways, so this is going to be your levels here. Um, there are multiple level meters on this, and you want to do your levels starting with the channels and then moving away. So what you want is to go ahead and make sure that these, you're getting, you know, all of the green or so, and most of the yellow and no red. So this is very similar to the ones there, but you want some of this, and, and you don't want the over to be indicated. So you can turn this up, you'll hear it like that. And you want to do this on the main part of the music, not the quiet part like I'm on now. But so you set this to an appropriate level, and then you want to match this here. You want this to be, you know, approximately the same. You can trim for louder or, or quieter records here. And then once you've got this, you want you want the master level to be up around here, that you're getting enough volume out. Once you're satisfied, you can come over to here and select the DJ mix. So remember to do that, we hit source, and then we can select I've gone crazy. Sorry, it's down here. DJ mix Studio A. So one thing that we can do is we can set this to program two just for testing. So now we can put the monitors on program two, and we'll be able to listen to this. So you can see now that we'll turn this on. This is a really weird record, fantastic. So again, what you want to check here is you see the levels here. This is good, we've got some yellow, some yellow, and then this level is good as well. And once you've got that all set, you can use this little lever to pick the needle off the record gently. Reset it to the beginning of the song. You can also use the headphone, the preview button to select this. 
So you hit preview and you'll be able to listen to them through the headphones. And now you're ready to use it as a source. When you're ready to play, just hit the play button here. Start, stop, and then turn it on here. One last little note, we have the tape players down here. This is tape one here and tape two, which I'll label at some point in time. You can eject there. On buttons are here. Fairly straightforward. CD players are here. The one thing about the CD players is they have GPIO control. So when you turn the source on on the board, the CD will start playing. These should all be configured as single, which means that it won't go from one recording to the next. It will just play through and stop. If you have any really funky CDs, this one on the bottom is the older model with the tray that you drop the CD in. So if you have a CD with a label or one that looks homemade or kind of sketchy looking, put it in CD3. CD1 and 2 are better for manufactured discs. The sliding mechanism has a tendency to eat CDs if the label starts to peel off. So make sure you use the tray for sketchy CDs and not these, you know, sketchy ones. We do kind of keep a spare a pile of these in case they break in the corner of our um, storage closet. So just in case, please let Ops know if you have a problem and we'll help you either get the CD out or swap out the CD player if it's broken. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this marvelous demonstration. If you have any other questions, feel free to send them to the ops list, wmfo-ops at googlegroups.com. Another great resource for you is the staff handbook, the DJ handbook, which is available from the website, or also there's usually a copy kicking around down here in the uh, compartment. But thanks so much for watching, and enjoy the airwaves.